Hello, and thank you for exploring Lakehead International's videos. My name is Jordan, and I am the International New and Social Media Officer. I'm also the host of the Lakehead International Live series, a fun and informative way for you to connect with current international students, professors, and ask questions about admissions and everything Lakehead. You are about to watch a recording from one of our previous live sessions. If any questions arise throughout the video, please do not hesitate to comment below. If you would like to check out some of our upcoming live sessions, please head over to our website at lakeheadu.ca forward slash international dash live. Let's begin. And now I would like to officially welcome you to Lakehead and I'll dive into what Lakehead University is, who we are uh, and where we are. So Lakehead University is a public institution within Canada and more specifically Ontario. We do have two campuses, one in Aurelia, Ontario, which is in central Ontario and uh, another campus in Thunder Bay, Ontario, which is Northwestern Ontario. Both campuses are located just 90 minutes um, uh, from Toronto. Aurelia is located 90 minutes by driving and Thunder Bay is 90 minutes by flight. Some of the things that we're most proud to be recognized for uh, are listed at the bottom of your screen here. So we do have uh, some, a few of our rankings listed there as well as some of our, our most proud internal uh, accomplishments. So we are recognized as the number one undergraduate research university in Canada. We've had that recognition for five years in a row now, so we're of course very proud to be uh, consistently ranked uh, in the top for Canada for research. Uh, speaking of top, we're also recognized as the top Canadian university uh, under 10,000 students in the entire world, and that's a ranking by Times Higher Education. And last but not least, we're also recognized as one of Canada's top 10 universities in the primarily undergraduate field uh, of, by McLean's. So speaking of uh, our, our students and our classes and what we offer, um, for students that graduate and, and graduates in general at Lakehead University, our employment rate is 96.7. So what that means is after a student is able to walk across the stage or, or uh, at least complete their degree here at Lakehead University, 96.7% of those students are employed within two years of graduation. Uh, that's above the Ontario average as well as above uh, the Canadian average. So it really speaks to the, the learning opportunities that you have here, but also speaks to uh, what, what our employers across Canada, across the world, essentially look at Lakehead's degree as, and they see the value in that degree. Uh, speaking of classes, our, our classes, we're very proud to offer small classes and intimate classes where you're able to connect directly with your professors and classmates and, and be more involved in some of that group working and experiential learning opportunities. On our Thunder Bay campus, our student to professor ratio is 15 to one, and on our Aurelia campus, it's 13 to one. And last but not least, I would be remiss not to mention that uh, today's session is for our international students who are exploring education and hopefully exploring Lakehead. Uh, we do have over 70 nations represented in our, our student body right now, and of course, we're always looking to grow that, looking to diversify and add to it. Uh, so welcome, and I hope that one day we'll have you soon here at Lakehead adding to that number yourself. Chatting about academics at Lakehead, uh, I'll dive into some of the, the faculties and then we'll chat about the Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies. Alrighty, so academics at Lakehead. The, the 10 faculties listed on your screen are all of our academic faculties. Today we're going to dive into science and environmental studies, but I'll read uh, the, the full list here for everyone. So we do have business administration, engineering, science and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Medicine, as well as Faculty of Graduate Studies. So these are our 10 academic faculties. Like I mentioned though, we are gonna dive into science and environmental studies today. Um, we have uh, quite a few panelists with us to, to dive into it and really elaborate. Of course, myself and Hector are always here to answer questions about general things at Lakehead as well. So to start off, I wanna pass it over to Hector who's gonna chat about some of the state-of-the-art laboratories uh, uh, at Lakehead University. And, uh, specifically that uh, are accessed through Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies. Excellent, thank you Jordan. So yeah, at Lakehead University we're proud to offer an educational experience enriched in state-of-the-art laboratories. Uh, some of these labs are located in the university's new Center for Advanced Sciences and Engineering Studies building. Picture in this photo <clears throat> is our, sorry, <clears throat> is our instrumentation laboratory, which is located in our Center for Analytic Services, also known as LUCAS. 
Lucas is an access point um, to many of uh, Lakehead University's laboratories where international researchers and scientists lead research teams that offer a wide range of expertise to users all over North America and around the world. Um, speaking to, to the quality of uh, our programs here at Lakehead University. Awesome, thank you so much, Hector. Um, and, and then next we'll talk about sort of how our, our state-of-the-art laboratories are coupled perfectly with perfect natural environments that surround both our campuses. So whether it be in, Ontario, in Aurelia, pardon me, or Thunder Bay, um, but also not just surrounding our campuses, built right in, so right on and in the heart of campuses. I'll pass and refer to you, Hector. Right, right, yeah. Our, our geographic locations in North, like you were mentioning, Northwestern Ontario and Central Ontario, uh, present a perfect natural laboratory environment for our programs in the disciplines of science and environmental studies. In this picture, uh, participants can uh, see two Lakehead students in the McIntyre River, uh, which it runs right through campus, doing biology research in organisms that live in the aquatic ecosystem right outside their, outside their classroom doors. Awesome, thank you so much, Hector. Uh, next, I wanna chat about how, within the Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies, students can also focus their degree with specializations. Um, so uh, this actually essentially provides students with plenty of flexibility. For example, our Bachelor of Science general program allows students to choose from a wide variety of courses. The faculty also provides preparation for professional accreditations in geology and chemistry programs. Our Honours Bachelor of Science programs provide students with a strong foundation for entering careers in research, education, medicine, law, and other professions. Um, these are just, of course, a few of the examples of ways students can specialize their, their degree. Uh, did any of our panelists have anything to add with specializations? I know that we're going to dive into uh, some specific programs with specializations, such as computer science, uh, or at least some of the streams within computer science, but I want to open the floor to our panelists to also add in if they wish. If not, we can uh, chat about some of our other slides too. See a few head nods, perfect. So next I'll chat about sort of the recognition of Eco Canada. So our environmental programs here at Lakehead are nationally accredited through Eco Canada, which really speaks to uh, the rigorous quality of education that's provided, but also the connection and the relevance of these programs. So for students that are interested in that field and have that environmental aspect of any sort of a, a faculty of science and environmental studies degree, uh, that's something really important there as a part of your consideration to make sure that, you know, the, the courses and programs that are offered are fully accredited and, and they're recognized across Canada. Uh, it will help you, of course, in your, your job search upon graduation um, or potentially if you move on to a, a different professional degree or a graduate level course or to continue that educational journey. So next we'll chat about undergraduate programs at Lakehead University. So we'll dive into the program offerings. On your screen, you can see all of our undergraduate programs offered here at Lakehead University. Um, I certainly won't list them all because it would just, it would be me talking for or too, too long at one time. Um, but you'll notice so one of our special call-outs here is that there, there are a few programs here at Lakehead University that have a 100% employment rate after graduation within two years. So those programs are chemistry, computer science, geology, and physics, which of course, uh, as you know, we have a few special guests from those programs today, so we're really excited to have them. Who I'm sure could expand on them. Um, and you'll see at the top right, some of our, our programs do offer the cooperative advantage. Uh, and Hector has a slide and, and just a few here where we're gonna chat about the, the cooperative education advantage and what, what we can offer through that and, and what that experience involves. Uh, did any of our panelists wanna uh, have this opportunity to speak about their program maybe or, or speak about some of the, the programs in general and how this structure is offered here at Lakehead? Sure, I can, I can talk a little bit about some of the geology and earth science programs that we offer. Um, I think one of the key things you've already mentioned is that we're, we're very much into that idea of experiential learning. Located where we are here in Northern Ontario, we're in a spectacular natural laboratory to get out and look at the rocks in the field. There's all kinds of different types of rocks. There's all kinds of different mines and mineral deposits that we can look at. And this makes it a really interesting place to do our research. And as a result, I think that's come back to your other point, we have a really high employability rate at the end of our program, and that's partly because our students get such a great training opportunity. 
For sure. And I would love to add on to that too, is the fact that uh, in Northwestern Ontario, near our Thunder Bay campus, the natural resources sector is a significant part of our economy. And of course, that adds to the fact that the experiential learning opportunities and, and where our students can go um, is, is very diverse in that. And also, while you're studying your program, you're not going to be going necessarily to the exact same place every time. Your, your experiences will be varied and, and our professors do a great job in connecting. And of course, being a smaller community and a smaller university, um, that we're, we're still able to provide the full supports of any major university in Canada, uh, but we're also able to have our, our, our significant connections with the community and then call on those connections to add to, add to the, the courses that we offer, add to the programs we offer, all that sort of stuff. Did any of our other so, panelists want to add in? So, yes, sure. I can speak to sort of chemistry as well as we also have a chemistry biology, so you get two degrees in one at the end. So we have both that one as well, as well as we have our recent bioinformatics program. And so that's sort of an up and coming program that a lot of people are interested in. Um, the one thing in our sort of field is that most students are able to get a summer job during their undergraduate degree, which enhances their education and therefore makes them more employable. Awesome. And, and uh, certainly that also uh, speaks to the, the career uh, zone here at Lakehead University and the Student Success Center at uh, both of our campuses that offer career fairs on a regular basis. So students actually get the opportunity to meet with employers that are hiring for those part-time jobs, those summer jobs, and of course, towards the end of their degree, uh, employers that are hiring full-time positions right out of graduation. Uh, Dr. Olivier, before we dive into computer science, I know we have some dedicated slides coming up. Uh, so we'll save that and that'll be a little special feature in just a moment here. Uh, next, I want to chat about our, our graduate program. So we offer uh, several master's programs that also have that, that a strong employment rate of 100%. And then we also have a few doctoral programs. Um, I'll, I'll pass it back to the panel, maybe if they want to add to some of our master's or doctoral programs. I know that they vary just slightly from our undergraduate. So I guess I can speak to some of these. So as I said, I am the coordinator for the chemistry as well. So the master's in chemistry and the doctor of philosophy in chemistry, material science, which we have quite a few um, students in the programs. Um, access to the um, sort of our um, instrument labs and things of that nature sort of enhance your program, as well as you may be developing new instruments that will end up in the labs eventually and other people will be using as you go along. Um, note that for the majority of the master's programs and all of the doctor's program, doctoral programs, they are typically a thesis-based program, although there is one or two project-based as well as some that are course-based. Awesome, and I, I can elaborate on, on sort of the difference at a high level. Of course, every program varies in exactly uh, the, the mode of delivery or, or the offering. So course-based is, is typically where students will come to Lakehead University and they'll actually, uh, they'll register for courses and they'll go to the classroom environment and they'll, they'll learn a structured um, learning environment and structured material. In a thesis space, students get to work with a supervisor, if I'm not mistaken, and they get to select a, an area of study or a project of study, and they actually get to write a thesis on that. And, and they work very closely with our supervisors who are our faculty members, um, and they get to develop their own research in that case. Um, Robert, did you want to add to project base? I, I, I don't know too much about that one, if I'm being honest. <laughs> So project-based is kind of like a thesis base, except for instead of a thesis, which is worth a large amount of um, credits, you're gonna take a few more courses. And so therefore the project is like a mini thesis and you'd write up a report at the end of it. For sure, and it gives students obviously that, that connection to if students wish to pursue maybe uh, uh, the next stage in their educational journey after the degree that they're completing right now, completing these major research projects and these theses will really advance them in that, but also give them sort of step-by-step -step the knowledge as to 
how to write it, what research you need to collect, and it goes through the full process. It's not just one small portion of a thesis. You really get a full breadth of, of how to complete a, a research project uh, in, as well, in any field. As well, most students do at least publish one or more articles in peer-reviewed journals. Um, grad students most often do it, although occasionally some of the undergraduates working in labs during the summer also are authors on those papers. For sure. And, and did any of our other panelists have to, anything to add for the graduate slides? Uh, I think for geology, again, it's, it's very similar. Well, we, we have a very sim a simple program. We just do thesis-based masters. We don't have any of the other options at this time, but a lot of our, uh, again, our students do research-based projects. They're publishing their research in peer-reviewed journals, and they're either going on to work in the mining industry or going on to do PhDs. So we, again, we have a very good success rate for our program. Awesome. So next I'll, I'll chat, uh, or pardon me, I'll pass it over to Hector to chat about the cooperative advantage. Oh, Hector, you're just muted there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Uh, so for those of you who might not know what cooperative education is, it is an official part of your program that combines classroom study with work experience. This usually gives students at a competitive advantage as they gain work experience in their field of study before graduating. And this helps them find jobs more easily and attain better salary, salaries upon graduation. Our computer science, uh, our physics, and our environmental sustainability programs offer uh, cooperative education opportunity for students, and there are full-time work terms that can vary between four and 16 months. And during that time, students can um, expect to only pay a cooperative, um, cooperative education fee instead of full tuition fees. And they can gain, um, or they can expect to, to gain uh, a salary of between 20 and $25 per hour on average. Um, and um, again, like while you're studying your, or not studying, during your program of study, you, if you choose the cooperative education option, you get to uh, work for a term, which extends your, um, sometimes depending on the work term period that you choose, uh, your study program. But at the same time, uh, you gain work experience and you can, you can expect, expect uh, to earn a salary and not pay tuition fees while you're working in during your cooperative education program. We have over 140 national and international partners uh, that are hiring our students um, from, or, or our students participating in the co-op program. Uh, some of them, uh, as you can see in the, in, in the slide here, are IBM, uh, Bombardier, uh, Blackberry, um, and countless numbers um, of other companies. Um, our students can expect to uh, get the assistance of the university uh, through their work, um, job search, sorry. Um, and the way we do it is we provide resume and cover letter critiques, interview preparation workshops, and we give students the tools uh, to be able to perform their own job search, uh, providing different avenues for them to, to find the jo a job that drama, um, really resonates with them, okay? Uh, we give them access to a job bank that uh, we created specifically, specifically for students um, in the co-op program and that they can access to my success portal, um, but it's, it's one of our portals on campus, uh, and that is only available for them. Uh, the international students participating in the co-op program will need a study permit, uh, a work permit uh, on top of their study permit. And we do have an immigration advisor on campus that can help them uh, go through the process of application uh, for that work permit. And the eligibility criteria for the cooperative education um, options uh, vary depending on the program you're registered in, and, but it's generally based on the student's grades and the work term that they choose uh, within that um, cooperative education program. So the important takeaway here for all students is to know that the university has the um, student support for you to be able to succeed um, in your job search while you're studying with us uh, to participate in the co-op program. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that, that in-depth coverage of the cooperative education program. It's something that uh, many of our students have had amazing experiences in, and I always uh, really appreciate hearing about those experiences when I meet with students or I see students that I know on campus and I know that they've just finished their work time. And I always like to chat with them and ask sort of, what did you learn? And, and a, another thing to add here is also the fact that uh, because they're typically completing in their second, third, uh, or in between their third and their fourth year, these students are also being able to apply uh, the, the learning capabilities and, and, and learning outcomes that they, they took from first year. So for some of their first year courses, they're then applying and being able to use them right in the career field. So it really speaks to sort of the topics that are covered in our courses, but also just the learning takeaways that students have and, and how they can use them to of course, at the end, the end goal is to have gainful employment or move on to that next stage in your educational journey. So next, I wanted to do a brief program highlight and I'll pass over to Dr. Olivier to chat about computer science. So uh, our department uh, offers two, um, two undergraduate programs, a bachelor's and honors bachelor's and um, it's, we have basically two streams, one emphasizing science, one emphasizing uh, business. In the sci science stream allows the students to explore other fields of science, for example, chemistry, physics, biology, geology. Then the students can take courses there and, and, and maybe realize that, well, I could apply the knowledge that I have from computer science in this totally different field, uh, for, ex for example, in, in chemistry. Uh, now, the business stream uh, takes our students to the business uh, faculty of business uh, and administration and there they can learn about uh, e-commerce, they can learn about marketing and they can also see how they could apply computer science skills in that areas. We also offer two specializations, one in uh, health informatics where students take uh, courses, for example, big data, and then they write a, a, a small project uh, on that uh, on that area, or game programming, where they use artificial intelligence and computer graphics to design uh, games with uh, uh, interactive and autonomous agents in, in that games. Um, our department currently has uh, seven uh, adjunct professors, uh, uh, 13 uh, pr assistant, uh, associate and, and full professors. We have among them two research chairs and uh, that uh, gi gives our students the opportunity to be uh, really exposed to advanced research topics. Um, we, our department is, is also uh, uh, a place where you will find uh, a lot of opportunities for internships. For example, during the summer, you may do an internship with one of my colleagues or, or even with me. Um, there are also several challenges. For example, the, the last three were uh, the Microsoft ma Machine Learning Challenge. There was also a Mercedes-Benz um, uh, challenge where students had to program uh, apps uh, that will run in the cars of, of Mercedes, Mercedes. And uh, the last one was the NASA space robotics competition that uh, I led with my students. Our program has the um, one of the largest uh, co-op uh, options in, in Lakehead. So many, many computer science students go for co-op on the second uh, and, and third years. So that, that's if you are interested in into, uh, that that type of education, it's it's uh, our program is a uh, programs are uh, a good alternative, and the students there they have the chance of, for example, going to the market and uh, uh, being like exploring how is it to work with big, big databases in companies like uh, IBM, for example. Um, many of our students, after finishing undergrad, they also transition to our master's uh, in computer science. And uh, we offer the three options, course-based, uh, project-based, and uh, uh, thesis-based. Uh, these are the areas of, of research that we, we have in our department. Now I would say that the area with, with most the strength is artificial intelligence. Um, our master is master program is uh, 
is affiliated with the Vector Institute, that is the largest institute for uh, machine learning and deep learning in uh, Canada. Um, we also offer other, other areas, for example, optimization, robotics, and Internet of Things. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for diving into the, the broad department of computer science. I know that it's uh, significantly popular for our, our students here at Lakin and uh, the opportunities that you've discussed, such as the internships and challenges, are, of course, added bonuses to the program. So many of our students uh, come and, and they're just focused on the academics, they're just focused on completing the course and, and getting that degree. Uh, but then the added bonuses and the opportunities, the experiential learning opportunities, that are built in and, and offered on the side uh, really speak to sort of the passion that our professors and the department offers. And that's that's just computer science that we're, we're chatting about. This this really spans Lakehead University in general. The fact that uh, all of our professors are, are always seeking opportunities to offer our students with added bonuses and, and experiential learning opportunities. And that's a commitment for Lakehead University too, to offer more experiential learning opportunities. So something else that we want to chat about is the Lakehead Georgian opportunity. So uh, essentially you receive a degree and diploma in the matter of four years. So Lakehead Georgian is the partnership program between Lakehead University and Georgian College. Uh, we like to refer to it as the best of both worlds. So you get to combine a college education and a university education um, at our Aurelia campus as well as Georgian's uh, Barry campus. So we do offer four programs in this in this field. Uh, the high level programs are computer science, applied life sciences, uh, environmental sustainability, and uh, electrical engineering. So within uh, the Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies, three of those programs fall in there. The computer science, applied life sciences, and environmental sustainability. I'll dive into uh, the three of them and explain sort of what degree and diploma students can anticipate to receive. I'll chat about a few high level uh, features with the Lake at Georgian program, uh, but of course we will have a dedicated session uh, shortly with the Lake at Georgian uh, team. So with computer science, students can anticipate to receive an honors bachelor of science degree in computer science as well as a uh, computer programming diploma. Within the applied life sciences program, students can look to receive a honors bachelor of science degree in applied life sciences and a biotechnology health diploma. In our environmental sustainability program, students will receive an honors Bachelor of Arts and Science, environmental sustainability, specialization, and ecosystem management degree, and environmental technician diploma. So it's quite a mouthful, that last one. Um, with our Lakehead Georgian program, we're really proud to offer, on top of our Lakehead University entrance scholarships, we also have the International Visionary Award, which is a one-time $4,000 uh, award offered to students in their first year to help cover the cost of their uh, tuition. So next we'll chat about unique learning opportunities and I'll pass it over to Hector who's going to cover the cases building, sort of Lakehead's uh, newest building on our Thunder Bay campus but also the home to many important things. So I'll pass it over to him. I don't want to take too much of a slide away from Thank you very much, Rudra. At Lakehead University, we believe that modern learning spaces are a key to helping students develop the skills they need to be successful professionals. So picture here, uh, you can see our Center for Advanced Studies in Engineering and Sciences, also known as CASES, like um, Jordan was mentioning, which is home to, our, to four of our Lakehead University's newest Canada research chairs and several support uh, laboratories such as the Center of Excellence for Sustainable Mining and Exploration, the Biomass uh, Utilization Laboratory, the Prototype Development Facility, the Nanomaterials and Advanced Technologies Innovation Center, uh, and countless others. Um, and again, it just, uh, it's part of the, the, the campus or, or one of the, the main hearts, or the main parts of the campus for students in, in our, um, science and environmental studies faculty. For sure, and it's also home to our faculty of graduate studies, which is, uh, they offer uh, as a support unit to our graduate students. They have dedicated finance officers, admissions officers, uh, um, and of course, deans and chairs within there. Um, and, and to add on to what Hector said, there's also a few other support units in there. So we have our ingenuity space there, where which is a 
business incubator that's offered to all Lakehead University students. Um, and, and there's also a maker space in there. There's some amazing classrooms and theaters in there. Uh, but I, I personally think that the space itself is just a great spot to study. Uh, as a student myself, as a graduate of Lakehead University just a few years ago, uh, the Cases Building was just nearing completion as I was graduating. Uh, but now as an employee, it's a spot that I get to just go and enjoy a cup of coffee from the study or from Starbucks on campus. Uh, did anyone want to add anything to the Cases Building here? Yeah, I, I, I guess one of the things that I like about Cases, and I, I think it's great for our undergrads, is that because we're a small university, the access to the facilities, to research opportunities, to play with advanced pieces of equipment, it's opportunities as an undergrad you don't get at bigger schools. So that's, that's one of the real strengths of our programs, I think, here, and, and the sciences. We're really proud of that and how we give, give students those opportunities to try new methods, try new machineries, uh, which they just wouldn't get to do otherwise. Certainly, yeah, and I can add on to that and say that uh, in our experience and our knowledge is that undergraduate students are, are, are very focused on the course based methods, uh, but at Lakehead we strive to integrate and have experiential learning opportunities where students are getting to use uh, a million dollar equipment that is, is typically reserved at larger institutions for just the faculty or, or high level graduate students. So having them involved in that and giving that, them that experience, they also that then go get to be in the job market and be able to speak to using some of these uh, technologies that even private companies don't have access to. So next I want to chat about the Paleo DNA Laboratory. Uh, it is, Lakehead is really proud to be home of one of the top uh, one of the top ancient DNA laboratories in the world. We have been pioneers in the application of modern molecular genetic techniques and technologies to the study of archaeological, degraded, and paleo DNA. The laboratory provides three functions, research, services, and teaching. Our research covers many aspects of DNA analysis from the development and implementation of new extraction and purification methods uh, through their application. Research projects have involved the study of disease in ancient populations, wildlife classifications, and both modern and ancient human identification, among others. Uh, myself and Hector actually work in the same building as the Paleo and DNA Lab. Uh, conveniently, it's located just above our, our offices on the Thunder Bay campuses. Um, and not too long ago, myself and a few of my colleagues got to do a tour of the Paleo DNA Lab when we opened the doors to Lakehead to the public during our homecoming weekend, uh, and it was quite impressive. And, and to learn and chat with uh, the research chairs that are, are housed within the Paleo DNA Lab, but also the, the researchers in general and the students that get to be involved in that, uh, it's really great to understand sort of the important research that they are a part of, and also that recognition as one of the top ancient DNA laboratories in the entire world, housed right here at Lakehead University. And can I sort of add? Of course, yeah. Here, Jordan. <clears throat> Thanks. So um, one of our chemistry courses, which can be taken by chemistry majors, uh, biology majors, geology majors, as well as grad students in those programs, um, one of the modules offered in this course is to work in the Paleo DNA lab for basically a month. Awesome. Well, thank you for adding that. And I'm sure for any students that are, are interested in pursuing chemistry or um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's potentially open to students that are in other degrees that want to focus and do that. It might have prerequisite courses, but you can always connect directly with the Department of Chemistry and, and learn more about if there are prerequisites, what the course name is, all that sort of stuff. We're, we're always happy to assist you in every step of that process towards graduation. So next we're going to chat about the High Performance Computing Center. Uh, Dr. Olivieri, are you able to speak to this or would you like me to add to this? You can start. Okay, sounds good. So the High Performance uh, Computing Center is managed by the Technology Services Center. The, the acronym essentially for this is L-U-H-P-C-C. Um, and it provides high performance compu computing resources visualization tools, software, training, and support to facilitate research, discovery, and innovation in, in all academic fields of study. Um, here's a photo of uh, one of our professors in the Department of Computer Science, as well as some students. Um, 
again, showcasing an aspect of, of how our students are involved in, in getting access to these really important research centers or, or high performance computing centers in this case. Um, did anyone have to add, add to this slide? I, I have to say that uh, I, I believe that uh, the HPC in Lakehead is, I feel is super accessible to students. Um, and uh, it, it is a statement of how Lakehead believes that uh, the, the future contributions to society will have some sort of uh, uh, solutions to big complex uh, computational problems. Um, for example, the Department of Computer Science uses the HPC to perform big data analysis or to train big uh, deep neural network models uh, and also to, to do some uh, simulations in, in the optimization courses. Awesome, and it's quite impressive to be at, actually in this room. And uh, of course, this photo showcases just a few of the machines. Uh, there are several rows of it, and and just learning about sort of um, what it's used for and, and the very detailed answers. Some of the the words that were used in the explanation uh, when I when I got to explore this room were quite complex, and I necessarily, didn't necessarily understand them. Uh, but for someone in in this field, they can certainly. Uh, grasp that or, or they're, they're taught that in the courses. Uh, Dr. Mawini, I'll, I'll pass it over to you. I saw that you're going to add something. Yes, so um, as well as our on-campus version, there's also a cluster of computers all across Canada that as researchers we have access to and if you're a student working with a professor you also have access to these Compute Canada resources which are housed all across Canada and you just need an internet connection and you install your programs on those clusters. There's both CPU and GPU versions of it and as well as virtual machines that you can set up to do a lot of even higher um, order calculations. Awesome. And one of our uh, facilities that we have, which is coming up next, is part of Compute Canada. Awesome. Thank you for the segue to our uh, virtual reality lab. Um, so I'll chat about this and then of course if anyone wants to add on to it, they're more than welcome to. Um, so the virtual reality lab is Lakehead's university virtual reality environment. Uh, it's referred to as the acronym LUVRE. Managed by Technology Services Center boasts the, the latest in state-of-the-art imaging and processing technology, truly establishing Lake as a leader in virtual reality instruction and research. A high-performance graphical workstation drives the video display, rendering, and complex computations. Coupled with high refresh rates, uh, stereoscopic 3D DLP projectors, and an 8-foot by 31-foot 150 degree curved laser calibrated screen. These robust technologies result in highly realistic and sophisticated interactive simulation environments that is useful for understanding uh, spatial dynamics as well as relationships among objects, peoples, people, pardon me, and places. Um, LUVRE offers faculty and students unique experiences that are consistent with the successful instructional stra strategies, hands-on learning, group projects and discussions, simulations and con concept visualization. So of course, in this photo, you can see a few students who are, are doing just that. They're, they're, uh, they're reviewing a concept visualization of, I, I honestly don't know, I would assume it's some sort of a DNA structure or a, a microorganism. A it's a protein. Okay, um, th thank you for adding that because I uh, graduated from Faculty of Business Administration. I'm very business focused and I did marketing and uh, human resources and industrial relations, but it's always so interesting. I love hosting these sessions and I love being a part of these webinars because uh, students and myself are able to expand our knowledge and really learn about the, the reaches of Lakehead University. Um, did anyone have anything to add to, to this slide? Sounds good. Okay, I'll, I'll pass it over to Hector now. He's going to chat a bit about uh, success stories here on, on campus within the Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies. Excellent. Thank you, Jordan. So yes, um, recently the Department of Economics took part on the fifth annual Bank of Canada Governors Challenge. Uh, 28 Canadian universities or universities across Canada 
took part, part in this competi competition, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is designed to promote the understanding of the role um, that monetary policies play in, Can in Canada's economy. Uh, working in teams, students provided analysis and forecasts on, on developments in the economy. They presented a monetary policy recommending recommend a, a monetary policy recommendation to keep inflation stable in line with the bank's inflation target of two percent. Okay, so judges evaluated teams on the sub substance of their analysis, the quality of their presentations, and the evidence um, that they work as a, as, a, as a team. As a team. Uh, from the 24 Canadian universities that participated in that competition, Lakehead was one of the five teams moving on to the final round. And that is a great example of the way that the Department of Economics is still engaging um, in experiential learning. Sorry. No worries. Um, yeah, go ahead, Jordan, sorry. No, that's okay. I was, I was just gonna add on here and say, uh, of course, the, the recognition here is that uh, within the Canadian institution environment, we're all very public institutions are are competitive, and we all offer our own advantages. But speaking to Lakehead University uh, and being a smaller institution, uh, sometimes students don't necessarily recognize that we are are, are highly ranked uh, within the public sector of Canada, but also among the world. And the fact that we moved into the final round with just four other institutions in Canada, where we competed against twenty four really speaks to the knowledge of the students that participated in this event. And, and that's knowledge that they would have picked up in their courses and, and their other experiential learning opportunities built right into the program. I myself have a, a student worker who is doing a co-op with us um, from the Department of Economics and she's doing uh, data analysis for, for our digital experiences and social media environments. So it's, it's great to see how she can actually apply the knowledge that she knows from economics in a realm that not everyone recognizes a traditional economics realm. Next, I want to chat about a Lakehead graduate, Khaled. Um, he's a graduate of our Honors Bachelor of Science in Geology from Lakehead and was involved in researching our region's uh, tectonic activity. Thunder Bay's region is currently geologically stable and that, and that hasn't always been the case. Fractures in the rock point to tectonic activity in the past, which uh, Khaled is studying with geology professor Mary Louise Hill. I'm sure, uh, Pete, you, you may be able to add to the slide or you may want to add more to the tectonic activity in Canada or Thunder Bay specifically. So I'll pass it over to you if you want to add anything. Sure. Um, yeah, Khalid was, a, was an honors student or did his four year undergrad. He came to us from, I think it was Ethiopia originally, and he was a refugee and he came and, and went through the geology program here at Lakehead. Was an outstanding student, did a really good job. He's now working at one of the, the local mines as a, as a geologist. As he managed to get some work experience over the summer, uh, completed a really good thesis, and he's now very happily uh, back at work. His project was really good. Like you said, it's looking at the, the different structures and the different tectonic history of our region. Geologi geologically, we're in a fascinating place to, to work and study. I, I think I said at the beginning, it's, a, it's an amazing natural laboratory and our students get these great hands-on experiences to try these things as a result of that. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Awesome, thank you so much for adding that. Uh, so next we'll, we'll chat about one last success story, uh, which is within the MyTax program. So I'll pass it over to Hector to chat about this one. Thank you, Jordan. So Alexander Rubin, the student uh, here uh, in the picture, uh, was from, or is from the Ukraine, and he was a PhD student in Lakehead's chemistry and materials science uh, program. And he uh, has been recognized for his inno in innovative uh, work uh, developing a cutting edge medical imaging technology that delivers high resolution pictures at a much lower dose of radiation, um, providing breast imaging alternatives to mammograms and other devices. Um, and again, like a lot of her students uh, get to engage in research at the graduate level, but also at the undergraduate level. Uh, this is an example of uh, the MITAX um, award for outstanding commercialization that he received just recently. Awesome. And Alexander was a, a, a PhD student in Lakehead's chemistry and material sciences program which I know we have someone from on our panel. So I'll pass it over to you if you wanted to add to this slide, uh, Robert. Sure, Alexander was a fantastic student. He worked with Dr. Ala Resnick um, in developing these techni techniques for dealing with x-ray imaging. 
um, and they're basically de developing new detectors that amplify the signal and therefore need a much smaller dose in terms of the amount of radiation you need to get a very clear picture and therefore to identify cancers and such early on, because the earlier you, you identify them, the better the treatment options are. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you for adding that and, and chatting a bit about uh, who he did his research with. Uh, I know that we are partnered and we, we are partnered with many communities uh, and other organizations, but just next door to us on the Thunder Bay campus is the Thunder Bay Health and Regional Sciences Center, which is Thunder Bay's uh, main emergency hospital, but also just uh, the main health care facility within Northwestern Ontario. Uh, and so we have many of our students in many of our programs uh, doing different placements there, doing some sort of research facilitation there. Uh, and it's great to see that this research and this student has made such a significant advance in, in a field that affects so many people around the world. And our programs, for example, in our chemistry program, we actually have a um, medicinal chemistry specialization going back to the ideas in terms of specialization at our undergraduate level that interacts with the health awesome. sciences center. Yeah, and, and then of course, for many of our students who are interested in, in moving on to uh, a professional program within a medical school, whether it be in Canada or then potentially with a university degree in Canada, that would be able to most likely be eligible for many, many medical schools across the world. So. Uh, that experience will, will certainly add to your, your CV, your resume, and then hopefully help you uh, get that admissions into the next stage in your education journey. Uh, so last but not least, our, our, our second last slide here is career opportunities. So on our screen here, we have career opportunities that cover the entire Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies. Uh, of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list of all the career opportunities that students can uh, participate in or, or pursue after graduating um, and as I mentioned because it does cover the entire faculty uh, there are most likely many many significant fields that students move into that we didn't have time to list uh, otherwise I would be here with 30 different slides I'm sure and that still probably wouldn't cover even the tip of the iceberg um, the thing with that being said is the the fact that students with their Lakehead degree are able to really specialize and, and and carve out their own their own passions and carve out and flex their their studies so that they get to pursue those passions which then will help them pursue that that end goal of a career or job in their their field um, so i won't dive into any of these careers um, as you know i'm i'm not in the science field uh, so i can't really speak to all of these uh, but as you as i've mentioned before and i want to add again is the fact that uh, a part of career opportunities is our career fairs hosted by the Student Success Center where we bring employers on campus who are hiring part-time positions, summer positions, internships, and then of course that, that full-time employment upon graduation. I'll pass it over to our panelists from the Faculty of uh, Science and Environmental Studies if they wanted to add to any one of these career opportunities or add to some of the one, ones that are not listed on the screen today. Yeah, for sure. I can, I can talk to that a little bit. I think for, for geology graduates and our water resource science students, there's sort of three career paths. I would say most of our students end up going into industry. So they end up working for mining companies or exploration companies. About a third end up working for some of the government surveys. Um, so the Ontario Geological Survey or the Geological Survey of Canada here in Ontario. And then the remainder go on to do PhDs or, you know, a different paths in academia. So we have a a really diverse group of trainees at the end of it and where they end up. But, uh, you know, as I, I can't emphasize enough, it's uh, the, the geology degree here at Lakehead's really well respected and our, our students are very, very employable. Awesome, thank, thank you for adding that in sort of the, the streams or the, the main areas that our students are going uh, within those degrees. Alrighty, so I'll pass it over to Hector, who's going to chat about one of our outstanding alumni. We only have time to feature one, uh, but Lena Lavina is definitely uh, someone we're, we're very proud of. I knew her personally when she was studying here at Lakehead University, uh, and so it's, it's always great to honor students that uh, I know personally and I get to speak to their, their character. 
So yes, uh, Lovino was one, or is one of our uh, computer science graduates, um, originally from India, and she participated in a comparative education um, option, and she got to do a paid internship at uh, IBM Toronto for 60 months, which she claims helped her fund um, her studies while she was um, here in Canada, uh, or well, not in Canada, she's still in Canada, but uh, while she was studying with us. Um, after graduating, she was hired by a firm in Toronto to help clients set up Salesforce, <clears throat> Salesforce CRM solutions. And she mentioned that uh, on a recent testimonial that as an engineer on the team, she built custom functionalities enabling this Salesforce to meet client specific requirements. And that one of the skills that helped her succeed um, in that task, um, she learned it here at Lakehead University. And it was that um, she learned how to analyze situations to better understand uh, herself on a personal level and clients uh, on a um, um, professional one to better meet, meet the needs of, of um, her clients um, in, um, in, in, in her professional life. Awesome. And then, of course, at the, at the very last line in, in her recent quote or recent interview was, these life, ex uh, life lessons for me are going to stay with me wherever I go. And that, that really speaks and I think summarizes, even though she's directly from the Department of Computer Science, and um, I, I think it speaks to any degree at Lakehead University is the fact that uh, what you learn here at Lakehead and things that you're involved in, whether they're built directly within the course, whether they're extracurricular, so you're doing them on your own time, really adding to your degree and your experience, they stay with you. And that's something consistently we've heard from many of our graduates who move on into amazing career fields and they, they do amazing things. So we're always proud to feature what our alumni are doing. So that does conclude uh, the, the presentation on faculty in science and environmental studies. Thank you for checking out today's video. If you have any questions, you can always comment below. Stay connected and follow us on our social media channels to stay informed about upcoming webinars and get an insider sneak peek of Lakehead University. See you next time.